Hi, you are listening to the Power People podcast with David D and I'm your host Tabo Mafuane. Today we'll be talking about the importance of friendship before you get into a relationship. And today I'm very excited we have a special guest. Her name is Pastor Nomhle and she's a wife to Pastor David D. And today we're going to be talking about the importance of friendship before you get into a relationship. I'm very excited about it. But before we do that, let's listen to this insert as Pastor David D speaks to us. So today we're talking about friendship to a relationship. Now, my my advice, strong advice, never rush into a relationship until you know a person. Okay, maybe you, you might not know how long should I hang around? How long should we be friends before I can say I know a person? Well, I can talk about my own experience. My wife, uh, Nomse and I, we were friends um, for a year, the whole 12 months before we entered a relationship. And today I consider uh, uh, our 15-year our marriage at the, at the recording of, 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 of this podcast uh, to be our friendship. So our friendship is the foundation of our strong marriage. So there is no time frame, but you got to be, you know, don't rush into it. Just give time to know a person. Give time of friendship. Friendship is pure, and it allows you to know a person. Friendship gives you an opportunity uh, to get to see the person's character. You see them when they are angry. You see them when they are happy. I'll make an example. When I, when I, when we, you know, first uh, few, I think a first year in a relationship with my wife. When we went to the movies, I would agree in whatever movie she wants to see. You know, I would eat uh, chocolate if she wants to eat chocolate. Or whatever she says, I was just a yes man. Why? Because I was pleasing her. I wanted to make sure that she's happy with me. But now, when we got into marriage, I'm a guy who likes Rambo and likes action movies and all suspense. Now, when we go to the movies, I want to watch what I want to watch. You know, I don't have to pretend and just please her only. So, you see what happens? When you are friends, you don't have to pretend. You be yourself. You get to know this person likes this. This person doesn't like this. Uh, so it is important not to rush into a relationship. Very important point. Friendship is an opportunity to get to see a person. You don't have to pretend when you're around a person. A relationship has expectation. A good, you know, a relationship has all these requirements. When, you know, if I called you and I didn't get you, maybe you saw my missed call, you have to call me back. Why did you call me back? Why did you reply to my text? Why this relationship? It's got, it's got, it's got, it's got commitment. It's got expectation. But friendship, it's quite simple. You understand if I can't reach a person, he or she will get back to me, you know, whenever she's available. A relationship has pressure and has temptation. You know, when you're in a relationship, that's where you, you, you know, you, you want to do things with this person because you're in love. You are already in a relationship. But when you are friends, you don't have to pressure your partner. And your partner doesn't have to pressure you to do anything because you are simply friends. You get to know one another. A relationship can turn sour when expectations are not met. Before you enter a relationship, be sure. The person the, of the person you are and be sure of the person you are getting into a relationship with. Many people today are hurt because of simple misunderstanding. You're with a person that you, you, did not under, you didn't know a person very well. And then today, there's a lot of misunderstanding. Some people try to control each other. They push each other away. They try to change one another. But when you are friends, you don't have to change a person because you know them and they know you. Take your time. Know a person before you say yes to a relationship. It is very important. Now, relationship, good habits. I want to give you this because it worked for us. It worked for us in our marriage. In A Power Couple, page 28, we talk about good habits that you must involve in your relationship. Now, you guys are an item. Okay, what are the things that you can do? Okay, simple things. Number one, pray together. You know, I, I'm sure you can tell that I, I love prayer. Pray together. Teach your partner how to pray. Now, I was never a praying person when I met my wife. She was the one who was always praying. And then she kind of easily talked me into it when I was going through something. Maybe I was facing a challenge. She would say, oh, you know, uh, let's pray about it. Until I got to understand that prayer 
can be in you know we can involve God in everything in every aspect of our lives. So pray together with your partner. It doesn't have to be an all night prayer, just a simple five minute prayer. Speak and then tell God about what you are going through and what you desire. It is very easy to start praying for someone you love. You know, it's easy to pray with someone you love. Uh, than to pray for the whole world. So your partner will listen to you and your partner will actually follow you. Now you can pray about your career. You can pray about your relationship. You can pray about the vision and the, and the dreams that you have and the things that you want to achieve. Prayer brings the fear of God in a relationship. Prayer brings respect for one another. A man who can pray, yeah, I find it very hard seeing him being an abuser. So as soon as you teach your man, as soon as you teach your woman how to pray, the fear of God is going to come in them. Another activity or another habit that I think is a great habit is study together, study books together. You must always educate yourself. Have a book that you are reading, you know, if you are not enrolling in, uh, in a course or something. I fell in love with reading the Bible because my wife used to share with me her revelation. You know, I was not a reader, you know. Uh, Sometimes, you know, most of the men, we read because probably we have to. It's, it's, it just doesn't come natural to most of us. So my wife had this thing of when she's excited about the verse, she will share with me, and then I began to, to, to learn. The Bible gave me wisdom. I, I suddenly knew how to make right decisions. I suddenly knew how to uh, choose right friends. You know, um, you want a partner who can, you know, who can study with you. Study, uh, not just the Bible, but, you know, different books, good books together. The Bible gave me wisdom. You know, when you are helping, when you are teaching your partner and you are sharing scriptures with your partner, you are actually making your partner wise. The Bible taught me how to love, how to respect my partner, and how to respect myself. You know, you cannot love God that you can't see if you fail to love people that you see. So when you study the Bible... Then you get to respect yourself. You get to respect your partner. And by, by doing that, you're actually showing respect to God. A third good habit for your relationship is hang out together. A strong relationship is built on communication and it requires time. For you to be a good communicator, you need to spend time with your partner. So hang out together is a very, very good habit that you need to learn and teach yourself. If you don't spend time together, you will end up disagreeing in most of the things. You will disagree all the time. There will suddenly be this misunderstanding. When a person says something, you think they are saying something else. So hang out together. Make time for your partner. Put a phone, cell phone down. You know, just talk. Look at your partner. Talk. And then whatever. But whatever. Just hang out together. Set time to hang out together. You can never be too busy to hang out with your partner. I mean, I know that we've got school, we've got work, we've got church, sometimes we've got kids, but you need to make time, schedule time for your partner. A third good habit for your relationship is hanging out together. Strong relationship is built on communication and that requires a plenty of time. You need to spend time with your partner. You need to know your partner. Now, we live in a busy world. We've got school. You've got work, you've got church, you've got family, sometimes you have kids. You know, you, you, can, you can find yourself getting lost in all the schedule. Now, if you don't spend enough time together, you end up disagreeing all the time. There will be a lot of misunderstanding. Simple things can just be misunderstood. You've got to spend time together. Create time to hang out. It is very important. Attend events together. You need to see how your partner behaves in public. This will help you build a team appearance. You know, when you, when you go in a public place and then you're always together with your partner, people will even recognize you when you're alone. Hey, where is your wife? Where is your husband? You know, where is your partner? So you need to spend time together even when you're attending events. School events, you know, for kids. Go together. Make time. Make sure that you are there together. Spend time talking to each other. Now, you can hang out by, let's say, going out for movies. It is not really a great time to hang out because in a movies we're actually watching a movie, you're not talking. I'm talking about time where you can sit and talk. Talk, you know, plays a, ro a huge role in communication. You, you know, you get to know your partner by their, th you know, their thoughts, their feelings, you know, what they desire, by what they say. So the more you actually spend time talking, it will help you. 
And you get to know your partner's thoughts, fears, desires, and plans through their, through their words, what they're saying. So you've got to create a communication platform. You've got to go out. Now, there are many ways you can go out, you know, just for simple, for drinks, for coffee. You can go out for ice cream. You can go out for a picnic. But you've got to make time to go out and, and, and actually just talk, communicate. Now, how to propose a relationship? Now, this is a question I get most of the time when I talk to people. I, I see I've got this friend of mine. I, I'm, I'm attracted to her. I just don't know what to say, how to, how to propose, how to propose a relationship. Uh, in a power couple book, we talk about this on page 33. You know, there's a, a, a scripture that says, whosoever find a wife, find a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. Now, which means a relationship or marriage, that is, because the wife is in marriage. For you to be in marriage, you actually have a favor. You're obtaining favor with God. Now, so you need to learn how to propose. You need to learn how to, you know, pop that question. Now, there's two uh, types of relationship. There's worldly uh, relationship and there's kingdom relationship. Now, a worldly way of proposing a relationship is simply called dating. It's when you just say, person, let's go out. You know, let's try this, let's try that, let's try this, and see if it works. This means a relationship is a trial. You know, you try out pe different people to see if it works. Now, you can have as many relationships, you know, before you find the right person. It's not the right way. You can go out with hundreds of people. It's not the right way because it's, it's almost like you're test driving. You know, let me test this, let me test that one, you know, let me check that one. That's not a, a right way to find a right partner. You can end up with a large number of ex-partners because you've been dating many people. Some people struggle to move, you know, uh, move on a relationship because uh, now you had a bad breakup because you are, you are trying that one and you are trying that one. And you're trying. So relationship must lead to marriage. Every relationship that you are getting into, it must produce marriage. So you don't want to you don't want to mess around with your time. You don't want to play with your time. If you are not ready to commit, you know why do you even bother getting into a relationship? Why do you even bother dating a person? You know, so it is very important that you 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 check that dating or or, or relationship. It's not it's not necessary for fun, because fun is your heart. If your if if your heart is broken, it's not fun. So a right way of proposing is a kingdom way. Is a kingdom way and a kingdom way. You know, it's simple. In Matthew 6, verse 33, the Bible says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So what is a kingdom way to propose, propose a relationship? Simple. Seek God first. It goes back to the previous point. Pray about it. Before you can propose somebody, involve God. God will not find you a right partner. God will not propose somebody for you. But God surely will assist you. You know, God will guide you. But you're going to have to actually propose a person. But involve God in a process. God knows your heart, your weakness, your strength. God knows, you know, he knows about your future. God has a plan, you know, uh, for every person, for every believer. And he has a plan for you. A right partner is part of that of, of that plan that God has for you, the prosperity that God has promised you. Your wife, your husband is part of that plan. Never start a relationship based on good looks or just good money. You know, these things, they, they come and go. These things, they change as we grow. God is interested in your love life. Involve God. And I know sometimes we call, we call relationship a private life. You know, um, up to an extent, a certain extent, it can be called a private life. But God is interested in it. When you get married, it's not private. They even ask, who gives this you know, woman to be married? It's a public thing. Somebody must stand in front of everyone and say, I do. You know, because you know, a relationship is, is a public thing. It's a thing that we all must celebrate. A kingdom relationship is built on biblical principles. All right, that was, that was really powerful. And I think it's very important. Pastor David D., thank you so much for doing this. I think it's very, very important. But also, we have a special guest today. How are you, Pastor Namle? I'm good. And how do you do, T? I do very well. I do very well. There's a very interesting story that Pastor D. shares uh, in the book. 
And then he says, when he saw you, you know, he tried to pursue you, and then you said no <laughs> for the whole year, okay. you know. And I think first question for you is like, I mean, I mean, he's a fine looking young man. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why did you say no to him? Why did I say no to him? Because I believe that there's time to everything. You know, if you are led by your emotions and by your flesh, really you will be so much misled. We are spiritual beings. Mm. And for, for me, that is the most important thing. And to understand that there's God's time and there's my time. Mm. So you don't entertain your time more than you should God's time. And at that time, God said, it's not time yet to be in a relationship, build as friends, be in that friendship zone. And it is something that people do not understand, but it's the most important thing to do. Did he understand that? When you were saying, no, uh, let's just be friends, did he understand the principle behind? Um, at first, it was like, okay. But I guess because we're good friends, he, he understood. You know, you should just look at what are you losing and what are you gaining. Mm -hmm. if, if, if there is a gain to be friends, because remember, I didn't tell him, let's be friends for a year. I said, let's be friends. Yeah. So I was, I was he, just he hoping, remembers that it's a year. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was hoping it's going to be like a few weeks. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You see? So, so, so remember, love is always hopeful. It hopes. And, and for me, it was that, no, let's be friends. This thing is going well. You know, our friendship is, is going well. Let's just stick there. You don't want to mess a good thing by starting at the wrong time. Mm. I, I think um, there's something that he mentions uh, which is very important. And a lot of men will um, agree with him when he, say he didn't pray much, you yeah. know, when the friendship or the relationship started. Yeah. It was not a prayerful. How did you get him? Uh, from, uh, 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 from yeah, like from from the guy who says God bless our food before we eat, Amen. You know, <laughs> to a person who is so in love with prayer right now. How did you get him to do that? This is God's person. It's not my person. Number one, it's to understand that amazing. Yeah, um, he was made by God, mm. and for me to understand that the God who made him has plans for him. And to acquire from God to say, what is it about him, Lord? He saw himself as an artist, and that's what he could see. But mm. to God, he was more. And I had to inquire of the Lord to say, Lord, you've given me this person. He's part of me. What is it for? And the journey started there to understand his ministry beyond music and to know that at the right time, you know, I would tell him, I will tell him that I'm going for an all-night prayer. I say, go, go, enjoy. And I will tell him, I'll be praying for you there. <laughs> so it was that, Lord, you know him. Lord, you know him. And I fully believe that your will will come to pass. You shouldn't give up on people, generally. Uh, Pastor D, when Pastor Nongse is praying for you, yeah. at that time where you were not praying, I'm curious to know what were you doing? <laughs> I was not happy that I was part of the, <laughs> I was part, I was a part of the prayer points. <laughs> yeah. But but I think as you ask, you know, Tabo, a very important question, how did you get him, you know, to be prayerful? And and I think that's the um, a question that maybe most of the ladies would want to know. How do I get my husband? How do I get my partner to go to church? How do I get my partner to uh, to be a spiritual person, it's difficult. Of course, you can't change a person. Mm. But I think, you know, what, uh, as, as, as Nongkli is mentioning, she had to make it a prayer point. So she prayed about it. So the question is, as you are listening, have you been praying for your partner to change? I mean, to, to, to actually go to church, to be a spiritual person. You cannot change a person by, your, by yourself, but God can. But you need to then start the whole thing, the process of prayer. And also adding on that, look at the heart. What is your, why, why do you want that for your partner? Remember I said it is God's person. And, and to understand the will of God for him. That Lord, this is your will for him. And for him to be that, he needs to be this type of person. 
you know. So so it, it's that, you know, sometimes people desire things because they see someone having it. They don't really, you know, it's like, oh, I wish my husband can be like that. It's nothing beyond that. So you need to understand the will of God for him. Then you are saying, Father, may you take him through the process so that he becomes that which you've called him for. So you need to check your heart. Don't, don't desire something because you see somebody else having it. Yeah. That's envious. Mm -hmm. Desire it because you know it is in the will of God that this person becomes this. We were talking about um, the importance of a friendship first before you get into uh, a relationship. All right, so I see um, this beautiful young woman, and then I develop this wonderful feelings bubbling inside of me. And you are saying the most important foundation before you start, in, uh, you start this relationship thing is to be friends. And my question is, how do you honestly become friends with someone that when you see them, all you want to do is just kiss them? How do you, how do you <laughs> honestly be, become I, friends? Yeah, You know, I'll take you to the point of maturity. Mm. You know, the fact that you, you want to eat, um, you know, like fast food, and all the time when you see the restaurant, you just want to buy. It doesn't mean you should eat fast food all the time. Yeah. It's unhealthy. Mm -hmm. So we don't just do things because we want them. Mature people know it's time to do this. It's time to do that. It's time to study. It's time to go to church. So the fact that you want to kiss a person, I mean, God forbid, let's say you, see, you are married and you see somebody else and you see them beautiful, doesn't mean you should propose them. No. It, feelings, you know, these fe feelings of, you know, I just see something, I want to do it, doesn't mean you should do it. So you need to follow principles in life. Friendship would help you know the person. But if you just want to jump into a relationship, you will misunderstand that beautiful partner that you are trying to be with. Or the beautiful partner that you're trying to have will misunderstand you. And if you can spend some few time together, like, you know, few months, few weeks, get to know a person, you would find that the things that you're going to have a misunderstanding on, the person is going to understand you, you know, out of friendship because they will get your character. They will see, you know, where you're coming from. They will know your background. You know, when you're like dating a person, you're even shy to tell them about your background. You can't tell them where you come from. You can even make up lies and say, I come from a rich family. But if you are friends, you get to talk about how poor you are. You get it without being ashamed. You see, we shouldn't look at the negative side of maybe um, if you get into a relationship too quickly, you will do things that you shouldn't do. Yeah. Well, let's look. Let's look at the transparency level. How transparent can you be with a stranger that you are only trying to, you know, to look good? Or, so if, if you know when you when you want to be with the person genuinely, you want to be yourself. So friendship is a great platform to be yourself because the person get to see and get to know you. But the big question now is, how, now we are friends, yeah. okay? We are getting to know each other a yeah. bit more. How get, like, what needs to happen? Or how do you know that now I know this person enough for me to be in a relationship? Because you said in the book that um, a, a, rela or a relationship is a lifetime, lifetime. To process a to, know, to, yeah. to, to know a person. Yeah. So how do I know that now I know this person enough for me to start ba being basic in a relationship. Things. Those mm -hmm. three things I mentioned, the purpose of a relationship, mm -hmm. when you know that you love a person, there's a difference between love and attraction. You can be attracted to a thousand people, mm -hmm. but you can only love a certain person, a person. Mm -hmm. Now, when you know that I love this person, what does that mean? Even if they don't have the face that they have, even if they say, God forbid, they're in an accident, they're no longer walking, I love this person. Mm -hmm. When you are in that point, that's point number one then you know you can be in a relationship. Number two, do you see kids with this person? Do you see a family? Can you tolerate the uncles and the aunt? You know, do you love this person enough to actually accept his, you know, his family or her family? Number three, do you know their vision? You cannot get into a relationship with, I mean, it's like getting into a bus and just say, let's drive. I don't know where you're going, but drop me whenever you get there. You need to know a person enough to know where they are going. And also for them to know where you are going. That is a vision. So if you know these three things, I think you're in the right track. Then you can propose a relationship. Now, a relationship is the road to marriage. So when you say, I love you, I want to be an item, what are you trying to say? You say, I love you, give me the address, I want to go pay Lobola. 
So when you're ready to do that, then you can get into a relationship. Wonderful. Speaking of love, Pastor Nomsle, mm-hmm. it's going to sound simple. It's going to sound uh, a bit naive, but I'm still going to ask it because I think it's a very important question to ask. Okay. The question is, what is love? What is love? <laughs> what is love? You know, a lot of people have asked, what is love? Yeah. And we, we've made love an emotional thing. We've made mm-hmm. it to be about me, I feel good today, tomorrow I don't feel good, I no longer love you and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Because of the world that we've brought in, um, that's how, you know, love has been defined by the world. Mm-hmm. But the Bible says God is love, which is in First Corinthians chapter 13. Love is kind. Love is patient. You know, that is love that I know. As, 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 as D is saying that when you know that you can tolerate a person, when you know that it is beyond the looks, can you stay with this person? You've seen them in, in, in ang- them angry and whatever. Can you still stay with this person? Then you see that love is what covers the multitude of sin. It is something that looks beyond what you see physically and you go in to say, can I have family with this person? Is this, do you understand? Because love especially this type of love we're talking about is based on companionship which is a partner and associate that what it can you associate with this person even in worst situations do you understand so so it is love when you you get to that point where you see that i am able to to love a person to that extent then you would understand it's 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 the god kind of love so how how do you really start this friendship thing while I mean, you've been, you are married already, you know, and how do you then go back to say, let's be friends now, you know, for our marriage to be uh, prosperous and be successful? The Bible says that all things work together for the good. You know, God can still make that work for your good. I think one of the most greatest stages in life is when you acknowledge that you are wrong. When you sit there and you are honest with yourself to say, I started wrong. God loves that step because it takes humility to admit a mistake. So when you accept and saying, you know what, God, I started wrong, then you invite him to this thing to saying, I now want to build with you. I understand that you are the builder of, of this marriage. We invite you as a couple, be part of this journey. God will guide you through and take you through the journey. And also, the second thing is that have mentors. Look at people whom you have identified to say, this couple is it for me. This is a power couple for me, not based on the fact that they were matching clothes. Mm-hmm. Not like it's wrong to, to match clothes, mm-hmm. but based on, on how they have lived. You, you've you seen them walking this relationship thing. Have them saying, please mentor us. We, we are married, yes, but we started in a wrong slate and we want to start afresh. You know, I think it's so interesting. I, I would I, that, that stage mm-hmm. would be a great one yeah. to an extent whereby, you know, if you are people who can just be think outside the box, you do your vows again to mm-hmm. saying, I will love you. It does not have to be, a, you know, in a, in a restaurant or whatever, just there in your room where you're committing to each other again to say, let us start all over. Let's start. So what's your name? Amazing. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, what do you say after this, man? What wow. You... I think she has just uh, put yeah. everything very well. Mm. Friendship is a good foundation yeah. for a good relationship. So if you want to enjoy the relationship, you must involve friendship. Look at your partner as your best friend. Look at your partner as your team, teammate. So she has put it right. You are not too late. You can start even right now. Start, but introduce God in it. And then God is going to help you. And what's your name? Wonderful. <laughs> and for everybody that is at home listening to this podcast, thank you so much for joining us. Until we meet again, bye-bye.